because I'm not a religious person. But I knew standing there that Jesus is the sovereign, godly power over the earth. Remember to subscribe and like and share. Hi, my name is Kim Savetta, and um, I have a story of a near-death experience. I was diagnosed with melanoma cancer, and it was inoperable. So the doctors could not operate on it. It was in a location that was um, very risky to do the surgery and two surgeons turned me down. They said, there's just no way that we can um, remove it. And so um, I had just taken a very strong medicine that was supposed to shrink it so that they could take it out. It didn't shrink it enough. And the problem with this medicine is that if you don't take it out, it will kill you within like a couple weeks. It will just grow back so fast you you won't survive um, and so I went into a very deep place of surrender so you know the, there's um, nothing like having a health challenge that you're facing your mortality and so I was in a place where I was saying to uh, Jesus um, okay if you're going to take me um, then I am ready to go but I asked, would he allow me to live for my children? One last uh, request is, is what I said. And my body was very clean. Um, I just had, uh, I just was in this place where my consciousness shifted. So I was laying down in my walk-in closet, okay? I was laying on my side. And all of a sudden, when I said that, to God, I said, you know, I, I, if you want to take me, I'm ready. Um, but I just ask if I could live for my children. All of a sudden, the closet disappeared. And what happened was I was, I awoke in heaven. And the way I would describe that to you is this, I was laying in the same position, but there was this beautiful like mist this cloudy mist but this mist was as soon as i awoke i knew everything all at once i knew that this mist um, was intelligent and that it was a, the extension of jesus now i come from a family where we weren't religious and i didn't believe in uh in in him in that way so it was very like astonishing to be there and it was like as as if that mist and on the horizon was this was you know like his white robe just like all i felt was this immense love that i cannot describe in words it's like i knew without a doubt that it was jesus i knew without a doubt his love which is impossible to describe in humanly terms we think that we love our children you know our spouse in this way but there is there are no words to describe this level of unconditional love and this instantaneous knowledge so it was like i knew his love on every in every cell of my body like down to my dna and I just started like crying in, in this vision, in this vision of heaven, because I didn't know that he loved me and loved everybody like that. I just didn't know. And um, I then heard, very difficult to explain, but this sound, the sound of like voices, but not like, human heavenly voices it was almost like frequencies and a vibration and a multitude of angels and it was like a constant sound of praise and unconditional love and but it didn't sound like a song you could put on it didn't sound like something we listen to on earth it was something that is again indescribable 
And so it just went down to the core of me where I realized his love. And I was told as I was laying, now I was told telepathically, not with a booming voice or anything like that, but I understood Jesus to tell me, do not cross the, the, the lines. Now the lines were invisible to the eye. When I was looking, uh, there were these, like a cross that was invisible and I was on the southwest corner of this area of this white mist. And I knew that if I crossed, I would be with him. And so his, his message to me was to not to cross, but to understand his love and his healing. And immediately I shot back into my body after that. And the next morning, a friend uh, who worked at a hospital and she did lymphatic massage on cancer patients. She was a very good friend and she had been through this whole cancer journey, journey with me for months and months and years and years. And so she called and she said, I was working on someone today and I was, she just kept talking about this melanoma doctor, that he's the best in the nation, in the USA, and that he treats people globally. He's just amazing. So she got his phone number and I called him and saw him and I did his treatment, which was very risky, but I felt like God was giving me his, his information. I felt like, cause I had known her for years. Why would it be just now? Here comes a friend that's talking about the doctor that I need. You know, this is very specialty doctor in this, the best in the nation, um, has patients all over the place. And the treatment doesn't work on everybody, but it worked on me. And so I am in remission. I am completely healed after that treatment. And I feel, I mean, I just feel that Jesus sent that doctor to me, that I went to heaven to hear him say, it's not your time. Don't cross over these lines. And he sent me back to, you know, share this message and to receive treatment. I feel like it's directly from him. I feel like, why didn't she call with this doctor's number, you know, six months before or, or whatever, you know, it just, it was absolutely incredible. I was like, um, brought up, in quantum physics and you know god is just the universe and you know god is the matrix and everybody you know just um we have a higher self and you know that's the way i was brought up um, my parents were not religious at all and so i've ne never been into a church i always have you know Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, Christianity, Catholicism, like all of it, I have looked in depth, you know, um, the Kabbalah, like all of it. But I have to say that when I was in heaven, I knew without a doubt, without a doubt, and this may sound religious, but I don't mean it that way because I'm not a religious person, but I knew standing there that Jesus is the sovereign godly power over the earth and that he is that source of unconditional love that we seek here in everybody and everything and we end up empty but through him we receive that from heaven is to combine both worlds of you know medicine and healthy you know like just taking care of yourself meditating your breath is so important so if you think about it um like i knew when i was in heaven i absolutely knew without a doubt that i was the breath that i breathe when i'm alive is from god i knew that so when you tune into your breath you are actually 
communicating with God. So it's very important to take time every single day and devote that to God where you are quiet. You're not just talking to God, you're listening. You're listening and you're breathing and you're paying attention to your breath. So breath, breathing is very, very important. And yes, you're breathing, especially like with your heart, heart math, you know, where you breathe. And I can run my client through that. Like when, when we do the meditation, I integrate some heart math in there because I'm certified with that. And so it's very nice to breathe um, with unconditional love in the heart. And so it does add to healing. But I would not say that it's one way. It, the healing path is not just one way. It can be for some, like I learned the opposite. I didn't want to have anything to do with medicine. And yet God showed me, this is your, this is your path, you know, along with the, along with the natural. So everybody is individual. Every single person is individual, but I would say meditation, yoga, you know, um, eating well you know making sure that you're alkaline rather than acidic like all the things that people want to eat like sugar meat dairy you know coffee alcohol that is acidic and then you've got the alkaline so i agree with that yes exercising every day and but not like you know you're like you devote your whole everything to working out i'm not like that i just do you know break a sweat every single day because it helps to raise the endorphins. So if somebody is suffering from anxiety or depression, um, we should all exercise about 30 minutes a day to where you break a sweat because then it raises the endorphins and it does give a more youthful appearance. I take these um, aloe vera capsules from this company called Desert Harvest and it's they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And they help with the skin and they help with um, everything like healing stomach issues and intestines and uh, the urinary tract, like all this. So I, I highly suggest looking into all things that make you um, wholer and like foods that are alive, supplements that are alive in the body. Um, drinking water is very important. Getting rest. I don't drink, so that's something the alcohol really, you know, it's like, it's not, it's not that good for you. And I think um, just, you know, before you wake up, I mean, after you wake up and before you go to bed, just handing over your day to God and just say, this is your day, uh, you know, speak to me, put it in my heart you know, monitor my thoughts, make sure that if you're having negative thoughts about yourself, that you stop it, stop it immediately and say, that's not from God. And I'm not going to think that. And, you know, positive affirmations are very helpful. Um, it's a whole picture, you know, just taking care of yourself. You know how to do that, breathe and exercise, but uh, we fight it as humans, but <laughs> um, I can help. Uh, with grief healing because, you know, the Holy Spirit tells me, um, you know, can confirm with evidence those loved ones on the other side. Um, I also give guidance of life purpose. Um, and also when those that have a past trauma, um, sometimes uh, the counseling, they go, but it doesn't work. Um, I can do go into the past and bring Jesus there and help them to overcome their their past traumas. If someone were to come to me for an AIM healing session, um, I can work with them. I start by um, a meditation um, and then I uh, scan the body with the Holy Spirit and am shown if there are parts of the body that um, need prayer, need you know healing, energy, light. Uh, then I pray over that that person and I can help with um, grief healing if um, somebody is needing some kind of closure, forgiveness, things with people, loved ones, you know, in heaven. Um, and so what I do with that, I can give evidential proof of that person and also um, their message 
Um, and it all has to do with the Holy Spirit of what I receive, but I have helped with um, trauma as well, where we go back into that trauma. There's trauma, trauma uh, rescue sessions that I do. And I bring the Holy Spirit in to help retrieve that person from the past because sometimes we get locked up in the past. Um, and sometimes people are seeking guidance on love or their life purpose or their health. And um, sometimes I'm shown, you know, what they need to eat or what they need to stop eating or that they're drinking too much coffee or, and, you know, not enough water or like whatever it is. To answer that question, why is there suffering? Why is there pain? Um, there's horrendous things happening on the earth. And we all ask that question. We all kind of feel like God is, you know, either punishing us or creating that, or why would God create something like that? I do believe that um, we did fall from some type of grace when we decided to come to earth and that because i remember when i was two years old i i couldn't even really talk any kind of like full paragraphs or anything like that but i i remember i walked and i looked out the screen door and i saw some kids fighting right and hitting each other and doing it fighting over a toy and i thought to myself i jumped out of my body i was outside of my body in this uh, mature voice, not a two-year-old voice. And I said, I didn't think it would be this violent. And I remember that, and I was only two. So I think on some level, we come, we agree, we're like, we're gonna come down there, we're gonna love, we're gonna forgive, we're gonna do better, we're gonna help the, the planet heal. And I think when we get here, we forget who we are, we don't forgive people, we even uh, ourselves partake in acts that are painful to others, you know, just judging or, or whatever. But I think that I, I wouldn't say that God is the one that's, <laughs> I do believe, I didn't used to believe this, but I do believe there are two forces. There is a dark force and it is running rampant on the earth. And this is the time to choose. This is the time to choose and to, you know, forgive what is in your past, drop your burdens. This is the time to look to Jesus. This is, this is the wake up call. It's happening right now. And so it is hard to accept. Like sometimes when you think of, you know, child abuse and, you know, this human, human trafficking and all this like suffering that has nothing to do with God. In my opinion, it has nothing to do with God. That is the other, uh, the enemy. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Remember to subscribe and like and share. Um, it's just been an absolute pleasure and I thank you so much. My name is Kim Savetta with Angel Intuitive Ministry and I'll see you soon. Thank you.